Hello and welcome to the Bassmasters. Ronnie Moore right there. I'm Tommy Sanders coming to you from the Bassmasters studio sponsored by Marathon. Of course, the clock is ticking. We are loaded with anticipation for a 2024 season for the Bassmaster Elite Series and much, much more here on this show. And of course, as, as we try to prime the pump for all that excitement, get ready, we always take a look at the previous year and what we saw and, and concentrate on the winners, Ronnie. But this one's a little bit different. We know, Tommy, we see it live throughout the entire competition. There are moments where the best anglers in the world have to make an adjustment and change up their game plan or stick to it even more so to make sure that they get the victory. So some of these catches, they may be final day catches, they may be day two, and some of them might be the first fish catch of the event. Tommy, let's kick it off at Lake Okeechobee. Lake Okeechobee, it was a wild season and, and it was couldn't get any wilder than the unexpected way this thing got going. Yeah, Tyler Rivette finding a pattern that is far different than anything we expected in the state of Florida, finding a canal, the Kissimmee River that flows in from the top of Lake Okeechobee and he found some offshore areas where some of these big fish were gathered up on a little ledge and what he did there was no pressure at all other than from maybe locals or non bass anglers he actually found this in practice fishing for crappy or sockele as he calls them and he was able to find yeah. some big fish holding there and on this final day Tommy the perspective of this was day three was absolutely terrible for Rivette his first fish catch of day four a six plus pounder we said Tyler Rivette he could win his first elite series event now Tyler had 24 5 on day one 29 2 on day two and then fell all the way down to 14 11 on day number three he was in jeopardy he was indeed and sticking to this pattern when everyone else has a flipping stick and a frog in their hand or fishing in the grass for him to do this and stick to it he said it early in the event I had a feeling after practice I didn't know if it was a fluke or not but I thought maybe I can win this event and every day he stayed just long enough to get a sign that this spot would pay off and it ended up paying off for him in a big way his first elite series title and on that final day this catch it was the most important of his tournament they're all that size Let's go! Woo! Yeah! Fairly hooked. Look at that. Well, Tyler Yvette gets his first Bassmaster Elite Series victory, turned a big, big corner with that catch right there. As you say, probably the most crucial corner of the tournament as far as the strategy, as far as winning goes. Then we went just up the road, a couple hours north to Lake Seminole, back-to-back -back events, and this was a different type of vibe because this guy was dominant throughout the entire week. Joey Safuentes, it was his to lose going into the final day, but Tommy, after a couple losses early on Championship Sunday, we mm. were wondering, that door was now open for some of the best in the world like Greg Hackney and even Tyler Rivette to walk through that door possibly and win it, but Joey did end up rebounding. Well, you couldn't take your eyes off Joey C. Puente, who had actually had a good start down at Okeechobee as well. A, uh, a well-traveled angler, but a technically a rookie. And for Joey C. Puente, he had had so many shortcomings early in his career on other trails and getting to the Elite Series. Multiple top five finishes, but not sealing the deal for a win. This was the opportunity for doubt to creep in. Losing a couple of his first bites of the day was very, very detrimental to his mindset, but he stuck with it. He knew his pattern was the one to win, and he ended up hooking and landing a couple big ones to seal the deal. Please, I need you so bad. Please, 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 please. Oh, I got grass around me. It's a big fish. Please don't come off. Oh no, there's a tree right there. There's a tree right there. No. Come on. Yes! Ah! Bam! Man! I have had a rough morning this morning. That's a six pounder. <laughs> oh my goodness. Maybe there's still hope for me. Thank you, Lord. Joey C. Fuentes, that's the fish that really kind of sealed the deal for him right there at Lake Seminole, second event of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series. And the rookie from Clinton, Arkansas, takes the trophy. We're gonna take a break really quickly. And when we come back, Ronnie, we're gonna take a look at the tournament that I know you thought was perhaps the most exciting fishing of the entire year. We're going to Lake Murray when we come back. The Bassmaster Elite Series is sponsored by Humminbird, Mercury, Toyota, and by 
Ranger Boats. Welcome back to the Bassmasters today. So glad you are with us. We are taking a look at the most impactful catches during the course of the 2023 season for the Bassmaster Elite Series and the Bassmaster Classic. And the guy with the momentum by anyone's reckoning as far as this body of water goes was Jeff Gustafson. Yeah, when the Classic was announced at Fort Loudon and Teleco Lakes right there in Knoxville, Tennessee, there was immediately a favorite on our radar and that was Jeff Gustafson. His 2021 Bassmaster Elite Series win on this body of water was dominated. All four days of the competition he led and he did so on smallmouth. The one thing that made the first fish catch for Jeff Gustafson of the tournament the most impactful, Tommy, was he found these fish on Sunday of practice. Day one of the classic is Friday, so Sunday he's found these fish and he had to hope and pray that for four or five days they stayed in the same spot. And when we came to him on camera day one of the classic, he was not in the canal that we were used to seeing him in. He was in a different area of Teleco and boy was he able to ride that to the biggest tournament weights for day one and day two of the whole classic. Yes, one down baby, 14 to go. Whew. That's a proper one. <laughs> Whew. Look at that. I don't think we need to measure that 20 and a half incher. Sweet. No doubt he was worried if yeah. those fish were going to be 17 inches and non keepers, but with it being a keeper and not only a keeper, a four pounder, Jeff Gustafson now knew in his heart of hearts and his gut, he knew with that first keeper of the day, I'm already going to count down. I need 14 more to win the classic. I know I can do it. And that one really cemented it in his heart. Like I, I'm doing the right thing. I can win this classic and he did. And it wound up he really needed that fish at the end. Yes. Of the day. And that's the thing. We always think you close out the tournament on the final day and that is your winning moment. The the glorious moment. But for Jeff Gustafson, he did so well with the biggest bag of the tournament on day one and the second biggest bag of the tournament on day two. Those two days carried the weight and he was able to hold off the rest of the by just enough to win the classic. If you win by an inch or a mile, you win by an ounce or a pound, you're still a Bassmaster Classic champion. Second international angler and first Canadian to ever win the World Championship, the Bassmaster Classic, Jeff Gustafson. And Tommy, it's kind of hard to reset after the Bassmaster Classic, but these Elite Series anglers had a week or two, maybe two or three weeks before they jumped back on the road for the Elite Series and they headed to South Carolina to Lake Murray when it was a cold classic just a few weeks earlier. It was a warm and heading and trending towards the spawn for this Elite really Series event. And one of the best sight fishermen in the world and on the Elite Series, Drew Benton, got the title at Lake Murray. But Tommy, I would argue that his six pounder on the final day that he caught sight fishing was not his most important fish. It was the shad spawn fish that he caught early on Championship Sunday. The fact that Brock Mosley clued him in on day three saying, hey, you had a tough day three sight fishing. Go give some shad spawn fish a chance early in the morning. The fact that he left the shad spawn area with 22 pounds in the live well, Tommy, only allowed him to spend the rest of his five or six hours of competition looking for the right ones to sight fish. And boy, did he find the right ones at the end of the day. But if he doesn't get off to a good start, he can't come from 10th to 1st. And a big deal for Drew Benton as well was just a few weeks prior, Tommy, he got a top five in the Bassmaster Classic and came up just short there. He had a couple bites in the last 10 minutes of the tournament where he could have maybe beat Jeff Gustafson. So for him to get redemption immediately following the Classic and to do it this way, catching them on the Shad Spawn early in the morning allowed him more leeway, more pressure off of his shoulders. Now I can go sight fish and do what I am the absolute best that him and his roommate Drew Cook share that title. Best sight fisherman on the Elite Series. He was able to spend four to five hours looking for the right fish. He found two quality fish in the last hour of the tournament. He could spend the time on him. He wasn't trying to fill the limit. He already had really good weight and that allowed him. He went from first after day two, Tommy, dropping down to 10th and then jumping back into the top spot. So Drew Benton, your champion based off of that. And what a phenomenal start and decision and hat tip to Brock Mosley. We'll see him later in this show, but he gave some wise advice to Drew Benton. I'm hooked in the back. One hook. I'm only going to get one chance of this. If he comes up here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Like, 
he swiped at it and I hooked him in the back. I don't know if it's our day, but it feels like it. Once again, congrats to Drew Benton, his second Bassmaster Elite Series victory. Well, we will move on through the 2023 season. When we come back, we were going to show you the top catches from Lay Lake, from Santee Cooper, and also the Sabine River. Don't go away. The Bassmaster Elite Series is sponsored by Yamaha. Rapala. Progressive Insurance. Nitro Boats. And by Power Pole. Welcome back. Glad you're with us on the Bassmasters today. We're taking a look back. Yet another look back at the year 2023. So much to see in that incredible season. First three events, we had uh, two first-time winners and one second-time winner. Another first-time winner we're going to talk about right now when we go to the giant complex of Santee Cooper Lakes in South Carolina, Ronnie Moore. And Luke Palmer is a fella in his fifth year at this point, very hardworking, and each year he's done a little bit more to establish a higher higher status there on the Bassmaster Elite Series. In this tournament, he's coming off a top 10 finish, a top five finish in the previous visit to Santee Cooper. So we knew he was going to be very good at this body of water. But Tommy, on day three, he went into day three in fourth place in this tournament and left with an absolutely giant lead. That helped catapult him into the win on Championship Sunday. But for Luke Palmer, that day three, when he caught a giant, we knew, hey, he is no longer a participant in this tournament. He is going to be the one dictating what happens on on the final day of this tournament. He was able to coast to victory, one of the biggest margins of victory we've ever seen. Yes! Yes! Woo! Yes! Baby! Yes! Get it. Oh! Woo! Yes! I'm, I'm sorry, I got a little excited on that one. I told you she's big, son. Yes! I went by the tree. I told you she's there. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. Luke Palmer, day number three, 26 pounds and three ounces, his biggest limit of the tournament. No slouch on day four either. Came back with almost 26 pounds to really, as you say, make it one of the biggest victory margins we've seen in recent years on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Let's go down to the state of Alabama. We've got to hit Alabama each and every year and this time around. Never an Elite Series destination, but a multiple classic destination, Lay Lake. Will Davis Jr., you always want your Elite Series rookie season to kick off on the right note, and to have your home lake on the schedule is absolutely a godsend, a blessing to you to have that. Will Davis Jr. had to rely on local knowledge, went back in a creek and found some fish that he had been saving all week. He used them and cashed in at the right time, and Will Davis was able to win by the smallest margin we've seen in a long time, two ounces over Brandon Polinick on his home body of water. And these two catches in the last hour of the tournament were the reasons why. How about that, baby? How about that? Hook in the hand and everything. Will Davis, most of these tournaments, the eventual winner is someone we find has bunkered in in one place and really exploited it fully. Will Davis was everywhere because this was his home water. He knew so many places to go and catch him. Of course, this great, great effort here on the final day made him the second rookie winner of the year on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Now let's go even further to the west. Let's go all the way to the Lone Star State of Texas, the Sabine River. This time around, it was Brock Mosley getting a job done that he's gotten so close at so many times. For Brock Mosley, he had stayed in contention on day one, had risen to the lead on day two, and on day three, he still had lacked a giant bite, one of those four-plus pounders. On day three, this was the most important fish catch of his week because he had to have a phone call, a conversation with Matty Wong, someone else in the top five, top ten of the event, and said, hey, if you can work with me. Give me 20 minutes to fish my stretch and then we can fish back and forth all day long together. Give me 20 minutes and we can we can make this work. He catches a four plus pounder in the first 30 minutes of the day and we knew that was the game changer that could allow Brock Mosley to win the event later on the Stay weekend. Hooked up. Stay hooked. Oh my God. Stay hooked up. Stay hooked up. Yeah! 
I ain't never kissed one before. I believe I kissed that one. One of those guys, Brock Mosley. Why hasn't he won yet on the Bassmaster Elite Series? Well, he's come so close so many times. Everyone breathes a big sigh of relief when he finally gets that victory. Congratulations, Brock Mosley, the champion on the Sabine River. Well, we are done, Ronnie Moore, believe it or not, with largemouth bass. But the good news is we got three more events. They're all about smallmouth, and it's coming up when we return. The Bassmaster Elite Series is sponsored by Minn Kota, Skeeter Boats, Bass Pro Shops, and by Dakota Lithium. Welcome back to the Bass Masters. Ronnie Moore and Tommy Sanders here with you. We're talking about the impactful catches, the single most important catch of each of our nine events, plus the classic, the Bassmaster Elite Series 2023. Joyce Fuentes became a rookie winner at the second event of the season. Now we take it up to what we call our northern swing and to start it out, the great, great legendary Lake St. Clair in Michigan. Yeah, when we think about this tournament, Joey Cifuentes went against the grain. He did something at Lake Seminole early in the year that no one else was really probing, no one else was doing. Everyone who was in contention, nine of our top ten were in Anchor Bay, all huddled around shallower fish, a mass population there. Joey was able to find an area in Canada that he was able to make work on his own. And on this final day, Tommy, he knew he had a, a gap to make up. He knew that the leaders weren't going to drop off much. He knew he needed a few five pounders to stay, you know, even with them. But he knew he needed maybe four, maybe five five pounders if he was going to win this tournament. And after landing a few five pounders this morning already, he had something that kind of you look at someone when you're watching the show and say, it's just meant to be. Oh my goodness, this is a big one. This is a big one. No! Oh my goodness. Come here. Come here, girl. No! Oh! Woo! Did you see that? Oh my goodness! That fish jumped in the boat! Oh my gosh! Oh my goodness! Hey, that's the way I want them all to Like you say, Ronnie, when it's your time, it's your time. And certainly there was no doubt after that incredible catch by Joey Cifuentes to win his second event as a rookie on the Bassmaster Elite Series Seminole and St. Clair. You'd think with a rookie with two victories, what a shoe in for rookie of the year, but not the case. We're going to move on up in our northern swing. We are going to go up to Lake Champlain and right on his tail at this point, the rookie Kyoya Fujita. The problem with Joey Cifuentes' two victories this season was that Kyoya Fujita got second early in the year at Seminole right behind him, and he got seventh at Lake St. Clair the same week Joey wins. So when Joey wins, he only gains a few points over Kyoya Fujita. And at Lake Champlain in New York, we saw on day two, Kyoya Fujita took the lead with a big day, and from there he was able to sustain and maintain. And on this final day with Cody Huff and Justin Atkins, breathing down his neck. He stayed stoic, calm, poised, and caught a big one late in the day that was able to help him win at Lake Champlain. Yeah, 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 yeah. Four pounder, yeah. Yeah, beautiful fish. Yeah, hole, hole three. Another rookie winner, the first victory for rookie Kyoya Fujita of Japan right there. As you say, an incredible, incredible angler, yeah. so calm, never speeds up, never does anything wrong, it seems. And now we head for the final stop on our northern swing. We are headed to the St. Lawrence River. The man who's won on the Bassmaster Elite Series his fifth year out here. It's Patrick Walters who has said, you know, I started out not very good up here in this part of the country on the smallmouth but he put all of that to rest with this effort here. Yeah, we know his capabilities. It seems like any time a tournament's gonna be in the 100 pound range, Patrick Walters is somewhere lingering. He is in these heavyweight events, but like you said, Tommy, he took what was considered a weakness. The reason he didn't win 
Angler of the Year his rookie season and finished 16th was a poor northern swing. But since then, he has rattled off a third, fourth, fifth, and a third in Angler of the Year because he has taken his weakness and made it a strength. And in this event, he was fighting off Taku Ito, Kyoyo Fujita, the Johnston brothers, Kyle Welcher, so many big names in our sport and in the Elite Series. And on this day three, this is a crucial day of competition for him because he had his biggest weight of the week and he had to protect it. And the only way you can protect a giant bag on the Great Lakes and Lake Ontario and the St. Lawrence River is get back as close as you can to the dock. He catches this big one, comes back a few hours early and knows I'm going to have a puncher's chance on the final day of this event to win. And that's what exactly what happened. <clears throat> That's another good one. Oh my God, this one's long. How hard for racing. That's what you call a day. Yeah, we probably don't need to catch no more. <laughs> That's a bag. Patrick Walters, 28 pounds, five ounces, day number three, his most productive day of all. Congratulations, Patrick Walters. Yeah, our 10 winners this season all had special moments. And Tommy, if we're being completely honest, this is what makes our sport so special. We fell in love with bass fishing because we had those moments in our mind. It wasn't the moment I get the trophy. That, that could be a moment that we thought about, but it's the moment you catch a giant fish, the moment you land a fish you're not supposed to land that we thought and dreamt about as kids that now have these Lead Series pros accomplishing those dreams. Those crucial big fish are the ones that make dreams come true, and we got to see that play out all last year. Very well put. Ronnie Moore, ladies and gentlemen, right there. I'm Tommy Sanders. We both thank you for joining us today for watching the greatest catches of the year in 23 on the Bassmasters.